This video demonstrates the standard operating procedure with respect to the batch distillation column in the unit operations laboratory at Lafayette College. It is important to be familiarized with the batch distillation equipment setup before beginning operation. This is the batch distillation column. The column is connected to city water lines which can be opened using V1. Water flow is directed through the condensers and controlled by flow indicator 1. The solution being tested will be poured into the still pot which is connected to valve V4. This solution will be heated up and brought to a boil in the system using heaters controlled by controllers C1, C2, and C3. The boiling point of the solution is dependent on the chemicals present in the solution. Once the solution is boiling, the vapor will travel up through the column and into the condensers. When operating at total reflux, the vapor will travel to the topmost condenser and will be sent back as a liquid into the column. When not operating at total reflux, vapor flow can be directed into the condenser located here, using valve V5. There are two main temperature indicators in the batch distillation column. The first is the reboiler temperature indicator, which indicates the temperature of the bottom's product. Next is the distillate temperature indicator, which indicates the temperature of the distillate being condensed. Before operating the batch distillation system, it is important to follow the necessary safety precautions. A hard hat, safety glasses, lab coat, long pants, and closed toe shoes must be worn in lab at all times. The long hair should be tied back and tucked under the hard hat. Furthermore, the person who is in charge of preparing the solutions must not be wearing contacts and should also wear gloves at all times. When preparing solutions in the laboratory, it is important to review the MSDS sheets for the chemicals being used in the experiment. Proper PPE, especially gloves, should be worn when handling chemicals in the lab. Solutions must be prepared under a fume hood at all times. In this experiment, there are two sets of solutions being prepared. The first set of solutions are used for the development of a calibration say, curve, wait, which relates wait a mole bit fractions as a function you of the dip into the index. Oh, I should. The second type of solution being prepared is a solution going into the still pot. This solution will have a volume of approximately 8 liters and will be prepared according to the experiment specifications. Due to the volume of the solution, the solution will have to be prepared over a secondary containment yep. area as shown here. Before filling the still, ensure valve 4 below the still is closed to ensure that no solution exits the system. Open the pinch clamp on the still and remove the glass stopper. Take the 8 liters of solution and carefully pour it into the still using a funnel with a tube attached. Pouring slowly to prevent oh, spilling over the edge of the funnel. Replace the glass stopper and the clamp and begin. <laughs> now, cooling water needs to begin flowing through the condensers in the system. Wait. Open the city water valve above the column using a stepladder and making sure that someone is supporting the stepladder as shown here. Next, open valve 3 and set the flow indicator to 1 gallon per minute. Any flow rate higher than that will result in flooding of the drainage. Cooling water is now flowing through both condensers. Before turning on the heaters, make sure the column is going to be operating at total reflux by Go. setting the control panel to off using the dial on C4. Now you can turn on the heaters. Additionally, ensure that the fluid level in the sill is higher than each heater, as heating the sill at a location without any liquid could damage the glass sill and result in rupture. Turn on the three heaters to 50% power and after 10 minutes, raise the heaters to 100%. Allow the system to heat up and wait for condensation to occur in the condenser. This will likely take over an hour, therefore the heater should be turned on approximately one hour before lab begins. When condensation begins, set the Go. system to the desired reflux ratio. To do this, set the control panel to timer using the dial on C4 and change the on okay. and off ratio on the reflux timer to your desired reflux ratio. Collect your first sample Can by setting the collecting flow time? from the distillate yeah. and opening valve 4 to collect from the still. Just, you're just gonna go yeah, from the still, just go for it. let a small amount of the solution go down the drain before collecting to ensure the sample is representative of the still at the time. Record the reboiler and distillate temperatures. No Starting at the first sign of condensation, samples should be collected every 15 minutes.
and whenever the distillate temperature increases by 1 degree Celsius. Collected samples are then measured on the refractometer. You can watch the video SOP for the refractometer for more information on this equipment. Make sure that all the vials used to collect samples are labeled properly, specifying the date, the operators, and what the solution is. The shutdown procedure is as follows. First, turn the heaters off by turning C1, C2, and C3 to 0%, and then switching all three controllers to off. Okay, wait. Good now. Set the reflux timer to on using the dial on C4 and allow for total reflux and all the remaining vapors to condense. Set the reflux timer to off once all the vapors have been condensed. Close. Okay, go. Take your hand out. Okay. And we just record the whole thing. Oh, yeah. Emergency shutdown procedures include the following. Shut off all the heaters, C1, C2, and C3. Set the system to operate a total reflux by setting C4 to the on position. And then complete the shutdown procedure as previously specified.